Guys, we're working with our friends at DraftKings, the official gaming partner of the UFC, to put you at the center of the action with a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Download DraftKings and enter the UFC 258 Daily Fantasy Contest with millions of dollars in total prizes up for grabs all week long. Here's how to play. Draft six fighters from Saturday's card. Stay below the $50,000 salary cap and rack up fantasy points for advances, takedowns, knockdowns, and more. Four rules and scoring can be found at DraftKings.com MMA. I'm picking Usman over Burns if that helps you. If you're a new user, go to dkng.co slash sunnen. Use the promo code sunnen when signing up and you'll get a shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. All right, guys, deja vu. Dana and Khabib are going to have a meeting. About what? I'm so curious why we keep meeting about meeting and talking about talking. I mean, I'm so curious about these things. I only know what I've been told, but I was told by Khabib, same as everybody else, to push the buy button on the pay-per-view and watched him say, I'm not coming back. I'm done. He has done countless interviews of smaller constitutes since then. Not one of them has he ever hedged. He's done. That doesn't mean that Dana doesn't have a different opinion. That's why I'm asking. I'm asking the question. What is it in some of these meetings? Where is the hedge? Where is the maybe? What are these guys meeting about? I mean, it's one of these things where we have to elect ourselves mayor of Get the Hintville. I mean, right, you, can, you can't do this in a whole lot of other relationships. I will tell you that much, okay? If the girl tells you she doesn't want to go to the dance and you keep on calling her, ask her, I mean, eventually her mom's going to get on the phone and say, hey, Jenny, Mar quit calling here. I mean, it's one of these things where I'm going, what are they talking about? What is there to talk about? We have one decision to make. Do we let him give the belt back, which happened 11 weeks ago, or do we take it off the son of a bitch? That's it. From a marketing standpoint, that is your belt. Do you want, on the record, somebody to walk away from it, or do you want to strip him? Those are the, those, that's all. What, what am I missing here? And if he wants to come back to try to collect a championship, all right, go right ahead. That story works every single time. But if we continue to act as though Khabib is the best in the world, what are we doing to the next two guys? I mean, as a byproduct, but what are we doing to those two guys, particularly if it's a veteran? Khabib is out there saying very beautiful things, by the way. It's very nice of Khabib, the way that he massages and puts Dustin Poirier over. When I watched that fight, I did not feel as though that was Khabib's hardest fight. But Khabib must have. Khabib has a true like and appreciation of Dustin Poirier. It's very nice the way Khabib talks about him. But Khabib is coming out and saying things like, Dustin deserves to be champion. And then fill in the blank. I don't know that there's any statement that you could say that would hold up amongst a reasonable jury as to who, how a guy who fought for the championship and got stomped out deserves to be champion. Like, I don't really understand how any of that works, but I do understand more of the messaging by Khabib, which is, I would really like for a guy who I beat to go on and run with the belt for a little bit because every match that he has and wins, it continues to serve and put me over. I get that side of it. The worst thing that could happen for Khabib and I don't know that anything bad could happen to Khabib, in all fairness. You go out 29-0 and 0 on your own terms. I don't know that anything bad could happen. But if you wanted to list them, and you wanted the thing that he would like least to happen is for a guy to come in who was there during his era, meaning Khabib's era, grab the strap and run with it and show I'm the best ever. Oh, and by the way, you never beat me. I was better than you even when you were here. It's exactly what Evander Holyfield did to Mike Tyson, and it is the problem that Charles Oliveira would serve to Khabib and his legacy, at least in the short term. If Oliveira goes in and he beats everybody that Khabib beats, and he beats them just as easy, if not easier, it is going to be a very real stigma that, hey man, you were never the best. I just didn't get my chance. It's like, that is literally what happened to Evander Holyfield. When Evander finally got in there with Mike Tyson, it wasn't a different era situation. 
And this was the case that Evander had to make. As a matter of fact, Evander was older than Tyson by two years. So this isn't a different era. This isn't you got out of your prime. This is you were never the world champion, not one day of your life. Not one day ever, no matter how much they put that belt around you and the media lied. I have always been here and I could always beat you. This is fake and you know it. And if it's not, then come and prove it. And as soon as Evander started to tell that story, it was very captivating. And when Evander did beat Mike and not have very hard of a time doing it, it did make you wonder, was there ever a day Tyson was truly the best in the world? And in the dirty, filthy world that is boxing, you can put a belt around anybody, no problem, and keep all of the right guys off. They're doing it today. Right now, there's guys with belts that aren't the best in the world, but the promoters and the managers keep them apart. It's not supposed to be that way in MMA, and I don't suggest for you that it is. What I suggest for you is that one of the reasons you keep hearing Khabib say all these nice things about Poirier is very self-serving. This guy's great. This guy's incredible. Oh, oh, well, yeah, I, I, I beat him. Yeah. But as this isn't about me, this is about him. Look, that's human nature. Khabib's doing nothing wrong. Every fighter plays it the same way. I am just sharing for you. If Khabib was to step aside and go, no, man, you want to know who the best guy is? It's, it's this Oliveira. Whew. What a fighter. What an up-and-comer. Wow. You see where that becomes problematic. Wait, Oliver is the best. Oliver was there when you were there. Should have you not been champion and it should have been Oliver? You see where it becomes a problem. It's a small problem. I fully admit this is a very small problem. It's going to be very hard for a guy like Oliver who has eight losses within the organization to ever make a dent into the legacy of Khabib that's got a big old goose egg. I get it. I'm just sharing with you the psychology of Khabib by coming out and putting over the guys who he beat, as opposed to shining up an Oliveira or shining up a Michael Chandler. That wouldn't serve his purposes, which is why that's happening, but I'm still lost on what are they meeting about? What are we meeting about? Because there's a talk that Connor and Dustin Poirier is being targeted by May. That's a rumor that started on a dirt sheet that I read called bloodyelbow.com, but I read it as early as today. If that fight is going to be done, but we're dangling Khabib coming back, does that mean we still don't take the belt off the son of a bitch? Or if in fact he does come back, then do Connor and Poirier just go fight for the sake of fighting and the winner advances into Khabib? I mean, I, I don't get the whole thing. Take the belt off of him. It's your belt. And he tried to give it back. Take the belt off of him. And I feel as though even more over than that and the marketing of the belt is the oddness of the North American fan who continues to act as though they love Khabib. I have been to almost every Khabib fight. One was sold out. And I realize there's a region and a part of the world that this guy is massive, but it's massive beyond what you understand. And none of you were clamoring to see Khabib. None of you paid your money. None of you went out. And all of you thought that little hat that he wore was weird until he retired. Once he retired, now you guys miss Khabib so much. Stories get retold. They get retold in a very short period of time. No sports story has ever been more retold and mistold in my lifetime than Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. That is a thing of fiction. If you go read about that, you just read fiction. If you read the scoring of those rounds, you read fiction. If you read the revenue of that fight, you have read fiction. That was only a few years ago. And I feel as though I can't keep saying any more story has been more rewritten falsely in retrospect, I feel as though I can't keep saying Connor versus Floyd. I feel as though I'm going to have to start saying the popularity of Khabib. You guys don't care. You guys never cared. There's parts of the world that do. I'm talking to you. Until he left. Take your belt back. It's your belt. No more meetings.